All right, it's new project day. I took about a week off after finishing the CO2 laser build to do major shop cleaning, some reorganization. You can see I've tried to increase the vibe of my desk area since I spent so much time out here. For any new viewers to my channel, perhaps 3D printing enthusiasts, let me give you a brief introduction. I'm Travis. For the past couple of years, I've been doing mostly DIY laser machine builds. I've been trying to slowly outfit my workshop with different digital manufacturing tools. Almost every machine in my shop has either been built from scratch or I've purchased a broken machine and retrofitted into a working machine. I love working with lasers, I love 3D printing, and I love a challenge. So that's the motivation behind this project. Let's go. Okay, so I have a number of the components we need, but not everything yet. I have a 500 watt laser source that's designed specifically for 3D printing. I have the Galvo scan head, I've got some AC servo motors, I've got a couple different controller options that I want to check out, and I've got like a mini PC and monitor and stuff uh, to run the software. What I don't have yet and what I need to figure out are the components I need for the air filtration system, um, for the gas system and enclosure. Um, but I want to take a look at the software first and see what kind of functionality it has so I know what to get. So the type of metal 3D printer I'm trying to make is called a SLM 3D printer, it stands for Selective Laser Melting. And it works somewhat similar to an FDM or resin 3D printer where the model is sliced and the layers are stacked on each other. In the case of SLM 3D printing, basically you're spreading out a thin layer of metal powder and then the laser is melting and fusing the, the layer together and then it builds up gradually. So based on my research and my understanding thus far, this project has some unique challenges. The first being the enclosed printing chamber. I believe it needs to be airtight, sealed, the oxygen purged out and replaced with argon gas. It needs a recirculating uh, filter system for the smoke, and I believe it also needs to be heated. The second challenge is working with the metal powder. Um, a number of people have recommended that I don't even attempt this project um, because of the safety hazards of working with the metal powder and it getting into the air and breathing it in. So we're going to have to take a, a lot of safety measures when handling that powder. So this project's going to be different than my other machine builds. Usually I start with a full 3D model and basically just have to manufacture the machine that I've designed. Um, for this project, we're going to start um, with no design and just do some experimenting and learning along the way and figure out the systems that we need to build. I kind of want to just build out like a testing platform as I go along and learn. Then once I understand all the systems, go back and come up with a design for the project. I want to be very clear, I'm not an expert, I'm a complete amateur, I'm choosing to accept the risks involved with this project. I'll share what I learned along the way and hopefully in the end we can get some metal 3D printed parts. The first thing I want to do is get this mini PC set up so we can install the softwares for both the different controller options. I'm going to take a look at them and compare their functionality, see what kind of sensors they support to help guide us through where we need to take this build and hopefully choose one of them to move forward with. Okay, so the first controller option is made by JCZ. You may have heard of them if you have like a fiber laser engraver. This controller is called the DLC2 uh, USB V3.2. Um, basically, I chose this controller. It was really the only option I could find uh, for a controller that came with SLM 3D printing software included uh, for a reasonable price. I also found that I needed to get this auxiliary board. Um, it has the right kind of connections for my type of laser source and the right input and outputs that I need. Um, so that was an additional item. The second controller option is made by a company, JYM3D. That stands for Joy You're Making 3D Print. I'd never heard of this before, but if you've seen my other videos, you know that Skyfire has been an awesome supporter of my previous projects supplying me with like laser cutting heads, a laser welder, and other parts to help me afford to build these machines. We actually started researching this project about six months ago. I explained to them what I wanted to build and they offered to help. But this time they really went above and beyond. They uh, contacted a number of different component suppliers. They helped me research and gather information so we could make the best choice of components. They even traveled to a 3D printing trade show to learn more and make connections. And while they were there, they came across this JYN 3D controller vendor that looked like another great affordable option. So they sent it to me to check out. Skyfire has sponsored this controller, the Galvo scan head, and the laser source for the project. So a huge thank you to Skyfire for enabling my wildest laser fantasies. If you need laser components for your project, check out their website at hilariousstore.com. 
They have very reasonable prices. They offer retrofitting and repair services, and they have outstanding support. I've been recommending them for a while now, and overall the feedback I've heard from other customers is very positive. And don't forget that uh, you can use my discount code to receive 5% off your order of laser components. Okay, I'm gonna get this PC set up so we can get the softwares installed and see what they both have to offer. I was able to get the software installed for the JYM controller and uh, I can poke around here. But I think we have to do a change of plans because I can't get this JCZ software to run. It looks like it uh, wants the controller installed and connected. So I guess I'm gonna go grab a piece of scrap plywood and I'll do like a temporary layout of my basic electronic components so we can get the controller uh, some power and plugged in and then uh, try again. I found a piece of scrap wood. I think I'm going to do something like this for our temporary setup to get us going. Uh, we have a mini breaker, line filter, and then I have the 24 volt power supply that can power both the controllers. Then I believe this is a 15 volt power supply that uh, goes to the scan head. And then I have a terminal rail kit here. Oh uh, yeah, so let me get this all hooked up. Everything is temporarily mounted, so let me start wiring this up. I've got the power supplies wired in and it looks like they are outputting uh, 24 volts and 15 volts. So cool. Let me go ahead and get those uh, wired into the controllers. I don't think I mentioned it before, but I'm going to run this off of my 240 volt outlet. That way I can power my servo drives. The controllers are wired. Got to be some of my most beautiful wiring work ever. Um, it looks like they are powering on. So let me get this hooked up to the computer and we'll see if the software can recognize it. All right, that fixed the problem. Now I can open the JCZ printing software and it looks uh, pretty sleek and clean. I poked around in it for a minute. Whenever I go into the settings menu, I can see everything looks um, well organized and um, well labeled, fairly straightforward to understand. Um, let me show you the other one by comparison. If I go into the JYM software, you can see it also has a really clean UI. Um, everything also looks pretty easy to understand. Um, I notice it's got some more graphical elements to it and stuff. This is going to be more difficult to choose than I thought. I think what I need to do next is actually get my laser source and galvo head wired up, try them with both of these different controllers and make sure I can actually get it to work with either of them since that's the main thing I can't change. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do next. I also need to come up with a slicing software that can output SLC files. I found this one option called Triangulatica and it looks pretty nice. I emailed them to get pricing and a demo, but I've not heard anything back. So if anyone knows of another good slicing option, please let me know in the comments. Let's start by taking a look at the scan head. It's a FuelTech PS20 scan head. And you can see it has the QBH connector here for my laser source. Looks like we're going to need some water cooling. And um, I wanted to take a look at it here and see what kind of mounting points it has. Looks like there's some spots here on the bottom. I have a big pile of extrusion here, so I think I need to come up with like a temporary stand for it uh, while we're testing it out. Let's have a look at this laser source. All right, I think it may be easier if I put this on the floor and then lift it up on the table. Okay, it's quite heavy. You can see it's a Max Photonics laser source. Looks like we got a couple cables for the power and control. Let me take a look at the user manuals and I'll see how to wire this. I came up with a quick frame design to support the Galvo scan head during testing. I need to cut this extrusion to length and I need to machine this one aluminum mounting plate. I've been thinking ahead about the powder delivery and spreading mechanisms, but we won't get into that just yet. I need to stay focused on the task at hand. We have a frame. Now I just need to make the mounting plate. Okay. 
we have a mounting plate. Let me just see if the holes line up. They look like they do. All right, let me get this attached. I think that should work pretty well as a testing platform. I've purchased some um, 25 and 15 pin breakout boards so we can start wiring. And also on the way I have some hoses so we can get the water cooling hooked up. Um, I'm planning on just hooking it up to the chiller for my laser tube cutting machine. I think I can just tie it into here that way I don't need a whole nother separate chiller. I almost forgot I want to make a quick floor for this so we're not cutting into my table. So let's get this laser cut real quick. Looks like that's going to fit, so let me get that attached. That's better. Now we won't be burning into my table. I think that's a pretty good stopping point for today. Next time we'll try to get the galvo head and the laser source wired up and see if we can get it running. Thank you to Skyfire for the equipment and thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making these projects possible. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.